Light is a feather. Stiff as a board. Light is a feather. Stiff as a board. We are the weirdos, mister. Black as night. Erase death from our sight. White as light. Mighty hectic, make it right. I myself am strange and unusual. Cast a circle, spark some incense, and grab a cup of tea, because it's time for the Cousins Coven podcast. I'm Sharon. And this is Wendy. Welcome back to the Coven, you guys. We're so happy to have you. I, I'm super excited because Sharon is actually in here recording with me today. Yes, so. we are recording together, so if it sounds different, it's because we are in Wendy's garage. <laughs> That's right. We're garaging it up. I've done nothing in here, but like I feel like... I could have done some more soundproofing, and I did not, so hopefully it's not echoey. Look, we have one foam board and a beautiful Chris Hemsworth. No, <laughs> wait, Chris Evans cardboard yes. cutout. One of the Chris's. Yeah. And he's here with us. Captain America is on our side, man. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, we're in Oregon in the mix of all these crazy fires going on. Yes. I don't know if you guys, any of our Oregon listeners, I hope you all are staying safe, and our condolences to all the families out there. Yeah. It's been insane like we just woke up a couple days ago to complete darkness Mm -hmm. it looked like mordor there was red in the sky um ash falling from the sky Mm -hmm. and it's been going on for days now where i'd look out and it would be completely black at like four or five o'clock right completely yellow Mm -hmm. it's been insane messing with my brain the first day it gave me a lot of anxiety because i didn't like going through my normal motions it didn't feel like a normal kind of day Mm -hmm. I felt like, um, the world's ending? Why yeah. am I at work? Yeah, I was on high alert, and my husband, um, he works in a town that was maybe five miles away from the fire, and so he got a call at five, five something in the morning, which we're not used to, so I was jolted awake by a phone call That's saying, don't go. Yeah, don't come into work. We're on the edge of a fire, and that's how we found out. Wow. And then I went downstairs to take my dog to the bathroom and she was like looking around and I'm looking around and I'm like, why is the sky red? Mm-hmm. It looks like the apocalypse is happening. It truly, truly did. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's getting a little bit better, but like it's so um, foggy looking mm-hmm. today. Like in my brain, it looks like fog. Right. But it's just smoke. Yeah. All the way down to the ground. So yeah. I am thankful that neither of us were touched, but I do feel a lot of um, sadness for people over in that area. And I, um, I know that this extends pretty much the whole West Coast has been dealing with this. So mm-hmm. we've got Washington and California who've also been dealing with it. And it's intense. And I know this episode doesn't air till September 30th, so I know things are going to be better by then. But right now it's really prominent in our in our minds. Yeah, we're in the thick of it, and it just seemed worth mentioning. Like, mm-hmm. it, yeah. it's so weird. I've never seen anything like this, mm-hmm. to just walk out and your sky is a completely different color. And, mm-hmm. like, even just the sun looks so weird because it's, I can only see it through so much smoke. It looks like a red planet, like I'm looking at a setting sun on Tatooine kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Weird times, guys. So it's been really messing with my brain. Like, after we we talked about um, Centralia Mm and Pennsylvania Mm -hmm. and how that town was just, like, forever burning and and, and it's linked to the Silent Hill movies. Like, it looks like Silent Hill by your house with all the smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is today with you here. It's much calmer. This is much more light than we've had all week. So for me, I'm like, whoa. (laughs) It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really intense. Yeah. And I'm actually thankful even more now for face masks Mm -hmm. because you really can't be outside and breathing this air. Yeah. It is extremely dangerous. So I just feel for all the families that are out there. um, And I guess I've been sending, trying to send as much protection out as I can for those um, who've lost their homes that they can find something. You know, I'm just hoping that they can find something quickly. And it's also giving me this appreciation for everything I have, a, a, yeah. like an affirmed, I guess, grateful attitude. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, man, mm-hmm. you got to live every day that you can to the fullest because in one instance, you never mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. Right. I know um, I was telling you, um, my daughter and I did this kind of synchronized dancing protection spell for those um, 
that, you know, for our house, because we thought the fire was coming straight towards us, because that's the path that it was on, it was going to come right by our house. And so we were seeing protection for that and for any of our family and loved ones. And so I didn't know if that extended out, but I have this crazy story that um, my husband's coworker lives right in the thick of the fires and all of his neighbor's houses burnt down and his house was untouched. Wow. And so I was like, uh... I like to think that we did that, but you never know. <laughs> but you never know. It's like the craziest synchronicity. That's kind of magic for you. You're still mm-hmm. kind of always questioning it. Like yeah. we talked about what we say, but don't question it. Yeah, I was like, is it a coincidence or yeah. you know? It's insane. It's like, could you have helped all the houses? <laughs> I don't or know. <laughs> it's you never know the limitations right. of your magic. So I think it makes sense because like that's kind of how I've been doing it. Like I was doing it just on myself and realizing people around me were getting affected. Mm-hmm. So then I kind of extended my radius to say and like I think you've definitely pushed the boundaries of extending radiuses because you <laughs> yeah. told me like well I went from my house to my neighborhood from my yeah. neighborhood to my town so like you've done that stuff yeah. together with your daughter so it sounds like it's a really cool um, new aspect to add yeah. a dance to it and I'm just like oh I love that so much <laughs> I was like this is gonna sound so crazy but my yeah. daughter was like I had a dream that there was all this smoke around and you and I were having to do something to protect people. And so then we just kind of ran with that and we wrote a spell and then we just started dancing. <laughs> it was weird. I think it's super cute. Yeah. Yeah. It was sweet. I used to do shit like that, but alone in my room. So it's really cute that you have your, your daughter. I've done stuff like that, I guess, guess with my sister, like doing oh, yeah. circles around trees mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But um, I don't think either of us were in a place that we like got down and did little jigs or anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Man, with all this being said, though, guys, um, you read the title. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about mirror magic yes. and kind of an emphasis on self-empowerment mm-hmm. and how we could use mirrors to just, you know, be badass bitches and witches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you have some news um, I only, Yeah, I only had one thing. So um, I did a Reiki session with somebody um, this past week. And I thought maybe it was longer than that. Anyways, I did a session with somebody. And when I was on the session, like as I was getting started, um, I had my phone ring and I was mm. like, okay, what's going on? And it seemed like a strange synchronicity and I, and they left a voicemail, but it was a number I didn't, had never seen before. So I thought maybe it was spam, but since they left a voicemail, I thought I needed to listen to it right there. And I, um, I'm not going to talk about the, ex- what I was experiencing in the moment, but it was very coincidental that this was happening at this very moment because the process was really getting started. And like, I was, um, really on the brink of something very amazing. Hmm. And, um, anyways, the voicemail that was left, I listened to it right at that moment. And all it was is a woman's voice saying, thank you. And that was it. And it hung up. What the fuck? It was a computerized woman's voice that said, thank you. Oh, thank you. Like something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But it was like, but not down. It was like an inflection, like, thank you. Hmm. And so I was like, what, what <laughs> did the universe just like send you a thank you? Right? Note? <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> that is such a cool synchronicity. Mm-hmm. I have such bad anxiety. I probably have like four unread voicemails <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's like, Ooh, what's this life? Mm, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't need new bills. So, so, yeah, that's my problem. I need to stop um, ignoring the signals of the earth and right. the universe. <laughs> the universe. I just thought it was weird. And for me, I was just like, okay, so why why is this coming through right now? Mm-hmm. It made me, something told me that I needed to listen to it. How Otherwise, did that make you feel? Um, I felt amazing. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like empowered almost. Did you feel like, oh, thanks. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's probably the best energy to have. Yeah. Like, even if it's just a coincidence, that mm-hmm. energy you're pouring back into the universe and being, right. like, appreciative, I feel like that's going to go for miles. Yeah. So All that positivity. Yeah. That's really cool. How did the Reiki go afterwards? Good. It was really successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It was great. 
So do we want to get into it unless you have something? Do you have anything? Literally, the only thing I really have is Mirror Magic. Okay. I didn't even look at articles this week. Do you, like, so what do you have on Mirror Magic? I just kind of have stuff on, like, how to use them, I guess, and what they do. Should we get into that? that? Or? Yeah, let's do it. So, I mean, I had some kind of history stuff, but it was... I think history is cool. Okay. You know, I like nerdy right. witchcraft so, history. Yes. So I came across three different types of old mirrors that they used to use in the olden days mm-hmm. for kind of mirror magic. And the first one is an obsidian scrying mirror. And so that's basically an, a mirror that's made out of obsidian and it's those really dark handheld mirrors. Yeah. So in the olden days, they used to, um, you guys can't see this, but I'm going to draw the mirror. For me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like circular almost with this handle and it's all one cohesive piece. So Of all obsidian? Yeah. So even or, the handle, even mm-hmm. the mirror itself, that's so dope. Mm-hmm. And the other ones that they have were just circles. Mm -hmm. So it's an obsidian circle, which I remember I used to have one of those when I was growing up. I don't, I think I got it from one of our grandparents. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, anyway, so they would use it to scry on. So they would look in there and see images. And it was very prominently used by John Dee in Enochian Magic. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, John D is one of those guys that, like, I've heard about. And in Mm -hmm. my mind, I glamorize him to be, like, kind of sexy because that's just what my imagination Mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. What do you know about John D? Like, he was with Queen Elizabeth, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. I think my impressions of him are kind of clouded since I do do the Enochian magic and he, him and Edward, John D and Edward Kelly were the ones who really prominently... Like, wrote about yeah, that, wrote and I feel like it. they left a mark in history, mm-hmm. so as far right. as figureheads. Right, and so I never thought of him as attractive. I always thought of him as this old dude who did magic for purposes to gain um, money. Money, power, mm-hmm. wealth. Right. Maybe even abused his power. Right. Like most men. Mm-hmm. Of the time period. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why you're like the the better, newer, feminine, right? Uh, Enoki magic, <laughs> you know, it. like, yeah. you don't need all these rigid ceremonial things, yeah. and this power structure, it can be kind of toxic. Right. right. So, Enoki and magic is one thing that I think could be more approachable, which you're great at, like, doing. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I do love it. So, I came across another mirror called the Mirror of Floron, and so apparently there's this demon named Floron and you're supposed to be able to summon him in this mirror and this mirror Hmm. is made out of this metal and it's like um, it's polished metal so they sit there and polish it and polish it and polish it until it has mirror like reflection and then the mirror of Floron actually has demon symbols so there are angel symbols and demon symbols and those ones are basically the same and these symbols um, are all around the edge of the mirror. So you're supposed to use your scrying stone on that mirror. And then the demon will talk to you. And supposedly, if you ask his questions, he will answer you in writing. And then um, after, if like sometimes the words that come back are jumbled. And so you have to keep asking the question until he gets it right. And by the, eighth, the ninth time, if he hasn't answered your question correctly... Um, you know, giving you actual words that mean something, Mm -hmm. then he will respond to you with his voice. Oh, wow. Okay, (laughs) so for our listeners, I think this is important to talk about, like demons, the word Mm -hmm. demon. Um, Immediately, I think a lot of people would be like, what the hell are they, these girls talking (laughs) about? They can't be talking to demons. No. But when you, what do you think about demon? Is it just a misunderstood entity that's been labeled by the church Mm -hmm. incorrectly? Or what are your thoughts? I believe that, um religions point them in a negative connotation on purpose because they want us to fear them because these are kind of the tricksters of the world of the underworld so i feel like demons a lot of times were angels at one time who fallen from grace so to speak in the religious realm and maybe that just means by not complying or Mm -hmm. just fitting with their agenda because Mm -hmm. being like someone who who does work with like cernanos the horn god and Mm -hmm. pan i know what it's like to have your God be the symbol of Satan, right. essentially the God that I have chosen. So like, that's why when you said demon, I still have mm-hmm. an anegic reaction. I know. Like, right. Oh shit. You talk to demons. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, well, you pray to the Cernanos, you pray to the horn God, but that was what you, what everyone was doing at that time before mm-hmm. I guess someone decided that that was evil. Right. So in metaphysical terms, I think of demons as a negative energy. So, mm-hmm. 
Sure. They're kind of trickstery, negative right. <clears throat> energy that can be pushed out by light energy. That's my metaphysical. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, my last mirror in history is the mirror of Lilith, and this is a black mirror that you that has symbols on it that Lilith can read, and you should be able to summon her by scrying into it. So similar to the mirror of Floron, made out of a different material, and to summon Lilith herself. Floron. Floron was the other one. Oh, what's this one? Mirror of Lilith. It's just called the Mirror of Lilith? Mm-hmm. But, like, how do you get that shit? Can I get it on Amazon? <laughs> I think you can make it yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. It can be made out of a mirror, you A think? black mirror. It has to be So black. you take a black mirror, preferably a hand mirror, and then you could draw on that. All these, you could draw all of the things on there that you needed to. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom got on my case for... Um, talking about Dollar Tree too much on the podcast and promoting it for free. But, like, once again, Dollar Tree is great for mirror magic. (laughs) I have a really cute, antique-looking, like, hand mirror that a friend got me. And I also think that if you're doing mirror magic and you're doing mirror magic spells, Mm -hmm. they have all these little small ones. They have compacts. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of this stuff, I think this is going to be relevant. Tip! Sorry, Mom! (laughs) (laughs) I like to go to um, thrift stores and... uh, antique stores mm-hmm. but an antique mirror i'd probably not draw on or write on no. for sure or that's why on. i was thinking dollar tree if maybe yeah. i'm gonna attempt to turn into the dark scrying mirror i've never mm-hmm. actually used a black scrying mirror but i've been very aware of the concept of using a black surface to scry mm-hmm. um, and it being super powerful um you know televisions they are considered a black scrying mirror really so that when your tv is off that mm-hmm. is a motherfucking portal. Okay, so I can agree with that because I have seen things in my TV that would be behind <laughs> me. But if I looked around... <laughs> Tell me more. Nothing there. What did it look like? Um, human form I've seen and then um, Misty. Oh my God. Do you remember that thing that we saw on Christmas? Or you, you saw, felt, and he I, pulled my yeah. arm. So to me, it was a lot of times it's like that. So I got I chills him. on my back from yeah. the man who grabbed my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him like, oh, um, you know, when I saw him at Christmas, he was that kind of misty like thing. Mm-hmm. In the TV, sometimes I see that as well. And I'm like, I know it's not my eyes. I know there's nothing else in the room. Yeah. And you know what's... Okay, I'm, I love the fact that you've actually seen it. I fucking love that. For me, I've never allowed myself to like go to bed with the TV off. And it's been this quirk I've always had. And it made me think, like, is that your intuition telling you that that's scary? <laughs> So it's like, does my TV ever reflect a black surface? Hardly. Like, I'm usually having, like, some sort of, like, screen with, Mm. like, rain playing while I sleep, Mm -hmm. TV playing while, like, whatever. I've been, like, a kid addicted baby, like, to TV, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, like, I never let my TV be off. And apparently, if you are going to just turn your TV off, which I recommend, don't Mm -hmm. be a crazy, like... (laughs) person like me but like you're supposed to put something over the television oh so like a little i don't know blanket or doily or just mm. something that like you know you're blocking it off right like they used to do in the 1900s when yeah. someone passed yeah. away or, or 1800s something. Yeah. yeah yeah so there's some like definitely tips that you can do with mirrors and if you're going to be doing mirror magic i guess i should say like there's a part of it that can be very um spiritually uplifting and really good for just like self-empowerment and I feel like that's like level one Mm -hmm. but with with mirror magic I think you can go from intermediate to advanced like there's a lot you could learn about mirror magic Mm -hmm. and like if you're going to be doing stuff with spirits and summoning and doing past life shadow work right and sitting in the dark and staring in a mirror like get ready to see shit behind you like that you said is not actually in the room Mm -hmm. you're going to see maybe images of your past life if you open up to that kind of experience Mm -hmm. you could like sit in the dark and have a candle um in front of the mirror and then just kind of like gaze off into the flame and gaze off into the Mm -hmm. mirror gaze off into your own eyes like get that spaced out kind of vibe when you do divination Mm -hmm. and really open up to maybe summoning um your past life and you can get visions yeah Mm -hmm. i love that oh Mm -hmm. my god i want to try that Right. I mean, I used to do kind of this candle magic slash mirror magic when I was younger, but I didn't know that's what it was. It was just weird. I love but that I, you always have been doing spells. I know, but mm-hmm. not knowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So um, mirrors, they basically are major amplifiers. You know, mm-hmm. when you are standing in front of a mirror or like a group of mirrors, you can just see how like there's an infinity of your reflection sometimes. Mm-hmm. So mirrors are just amplifying. Mm-hmm. They can also block um, or like reflect some sort of an energy. So like, let's mm-hmm. say you put a mirror on your front door. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like a reflection of bad juju, bad energy, mm-hmm. bad vibes. Get that shit out of here. A return to sender almost. Mm-hmm. So like... I've heard great tips. Like, let's say you're Mm -hmm. working and you put that up on your desk. And Mm -hmm. so anyone who comes by and they're giving you shit, that mirror that you just have subtly there, they're just reflecting it back. Oh my gosh. I've known a lot of people who've done that. Really? Had little mirrors on their desks? Yeah. Um, Some of them were actually large mirrors in a cubicle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why is that there? Oh my gosh. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually impressive. They used to say it was because, well... One of the ladies that I talked to, she said that she liked it there so she could see if somebody was coming up behind her. Uh, okay. Oh, but wait, was the mirror facing her? Um, the mirror was here, well, like on the cubicle itself. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like it was sitting in her in her cubicle. It was on her cubicle. Mm-hmm. So it was to the side of her, to her left side. Okay. So I think that would see. work. Mm-hmm. As long as it's kind of also reflecting out towards the back of, like, exit of her yeah. cubicle. I guess that's how she'd have mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa, what if she knew the tea on mirror magic? I know, right? <laughs> so um, um, a mirror too, like if you think about a mirror in your house that you have, look at what is that mirror reflecting? Is it reflecting clutter? Because then that mirror is going to be amplifying that kind of like gross, cluttered, mm-hmm. chaotic energy back at you. Right. And so that really woke me up this week and I started rearranging some shit in front of my mirror. Nice. Um, like a, if you want to change the vibration in front of a mirror and it, maybe it was like reflecting a dirty space, you know, mm-hmm. sage it, clean it physically, obviously, then sage it. Uh, maybe bring some crystals or some flowers into the reflection and that's going to be ha- like leveling up that vibration. Mm-hmm. So these are some really practical tips that I'm, like, just now learning, guys. Like, I love this shit. Yeah, that's great. I know for me, like, in my bedroom, I have my full-length mirror Mm -hmm. facing the window. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Right, because that's always changing based on Mm -hmm. the time of the day. So, I mean, it's reflecting sun. I think that would be powerful. It's reflecting the moon. I think that would be powerful. Mm Mm-hmm. Who knows what it's reflecting when it's uh, burning outside and the sky (laughs) is falling. I don't know what you're bringing in the last three days. Um, But yeah. Um, What else do I have? So I'm just going to go down my notes. They're honestly super out of place because I was just writing down things as I was learning them. Mm -hmm. So let's just go on this Mr. Toad's wild ride. Yeah. So um, back to using a mirror for self-empowerment. That's one that I thought was super practical that anyone getting into this could start doing. And that's when you're going to spend time looking in the mirror and actually looking at yourself, Mm -hmm. um, which can be hard for some people. And looking at yourself lovingly Mm -hmm. and being like, I love you. You're great. You're awesome. You're amazing. I am so thankful for you. I'm thankful for your strength. Or maybe you can even say stuff like, I radiate strength. I radiate Mm -hmm. courage and compassion. But you want to be saying kind of mantras that are uplifting Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of self-love. I think that's a great place to start Mm -hmm. um you could even turn that into a ritual in my mind if you're like getting ready for your day and getting your hair done your makeup done like make that an affirmation time get yourself in this zone of being like super powerful and grounded i love that me too Mm -hmm. i think that that's just kind of basic um some tips i was learning is that you could really just take time to stare in your eyes like you want to be alone undisturbed for this maybe like at night full moon kind of thing, whatever kind of energy you really want to vibe with. When you're looking into your eyes, you want to exhale love, basically, into that reflection, into that other Sharon or your other self, Mm -hmm. you know, as you're looking in. And then you want to inhale love from your reflection Mm -hmm. self. So it's just like receiving and Mm -hmm. giving that's like going on and on and on. And so you have to really like think about that mirror self as your other self in a sense Mm -hmm. and like spend time with it. Mm Mm-hmm. Say shit like, I create the life I desire. You know, I am powerful. All that good stuff. Um, you deserve love. And when you're staring into the mirror for a long period of time like that, again, your eyes are going to soften, like I was mentioning earlier. Um, and you might even be able to see your own aura, if that's mm. something you want to experiment with. This it could be a good time mm-hmm. to try to read your own aura. That's cool. Yeah. I, like that. I would love that. So, like, make sure your kind of the lights, I'd say, would be dim, would be helpful for that. Um, 
And I also had notes about the past life magic, but I feel like we kind of covered that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just like a good place, like, mm, you know, if you're interested in that, listeners, I think you can go research and find more Mm -hmm. on that. Um, Some tips are, though, as far as using the candle and the reflection, um, they recommend either a white or a black candle, and that's just really great for protection and things like that. Uh, What else? Oh, so when you're doing that kind of past life work, like I said, you do want to be ready for it Mm -hmm. because the mirror is going to reflect the energy you're putting into it. So if you're doing stuff where you're like summoning spirits, past lives, ancestors, and you're afraid of what's going to be in the mirror, you might conjure something like reflecting that energy. Mm -hmm. So be in a place where you're ready for experiences openly. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I wouldn't start off with that day one. Right. (laughs) Gotta have some positivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because the mirrors are considered like portals and almost a gateway to other realms and stuff like that, um, there's so many um, protection things that you can do and magical things that you can do that are going to boost and amplify this energy, like drawing runes on the mirror. Mm -hmm. So like if you want to put a protection rune or like like a prosperity rune Mm -hmm. and do some sort of like... Oh, I'm getting a random call. Sorry, guys. Random call. So anyway, if you're getting like a, some sort of prosperity spell, you could put a wealth rune symbol on the mirror, any kind of symbol on the mm-hmm. mirror, and that's just going to be like radiating, doing magic for you while you sleep, essentially. Mm-hmm. So I haven't done that, but you know it's on the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, I love runes. I love sigils. And with that, I think you could... Make your own, go off Nordic runes, whatever kind of thing you're vibing with. And another tip, if you're going to, like, pick up a mirror um, for magic, any kind of magic, let's say you're doing scrying, you're looking into it for divination purposes, don't clean it. Leave the smudges. Okay. Those smudges you can look at kind of, like, to make shapes like you do with clouds in the sky. Gotcha. So, like, let's say I'm holding the hand mirror out and maybe I'm changing the angle of it or changing the angle of my face and moving it around the room. Like, I could see different, like, shapes in those little, like, cloudy smudges and be like, Mm -hmm. what do you see? What does it look like to you? Right. Um, And, like, another thing, too, like, as you're moving the mirror around and maybe spinning it, like, at different angles, looking at different parts of the room behind you, you might see a person or you might see an image. And so, yeah, again, be prepared for that. Yeah. And maybe write notes down. So, like, I know for me, if I were doing that, I'd have a notebook. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I think it's always smart to... To take a record of your magical workings, and then mm-hmm. you can really track your progress and your journey and yeah. see the repeating patterns. Mm-hmm. I don't always do that. I'm never a perfect student, but like I think that is actually the best way to track yeah. your progress. Um, you could obviously use mirrors and manifestation spells. Um, you could do spells on top of mirrors. So like if I'm just doing some altar work and I just want to lay a mirror down, I could do put a candle on top of it, like a little small candle. I could put a crystal grid on top of it and just leave that Mm -hmm. in and of itself or do it in a spell work thing. But that's going to be boosting and helping me boost my magic into the universe and like help me manifest whatever I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I should just be doing from now on. Yeah. Like, boom. There's a little plus five to your magic. Right. So cool. Yeah, so I'm like really loving the idea of um, working with the mirrors more. Um, They're also good for blocking hexes and negative energies and moving on for maybe like a breakup. Um, You could do things like taking a picture of someone that you want to bind or Mm -hmm. writing their name on the mirror itself that you want to like bind or just like Mm -hmm. move on from. Nothing harmful here, nothing controlling. This is more just like if you feel negative shit coming towards you or you're trying to move on from something, I'm always trying to be telling you to use magic for the betterment of yourself and Mm -hmm. not in a selfish way, not in a controlling way. Just putting that out there, guys. So if you're doing a binding spell, let's say you write their name on the mirror, put their picture in the mirror, whatever. You could even get two little compact circle mirrors or whatever, mm-hmm. or whatever shape it is. Put those mirrors, um, you know, the reflection side facing together in between that person's name and then um, bind it. So, you know, maybe tape a little piece of twine to one side and then just start wrapping and wrapping mm-hmm. and wrapping. And so you're doing like this little binding spell. Um, and it's basically whatever that negative energy you feel like that person's sending you or that you get triggered from them by, um, it's going to be trapped in that mirror. That is the purpose of the spell. So it's going to be bouncing back and forth between those two mirrors and no longer interfering with your life. So this is like a set it and forget it kind of spell. 
Then what do you do with the mirrors when you're done? Um, options, kind of like how you were suggesting with getting rid of this kind of stuff. Put it in a dumpster. Mm-hmm. Bury it. Uh, put it somewhere if you really feel like you need to keep it nearby to keep an eye on it because you don't feel safe just destroying it. Maybe just put it, you know, in the closet somewhere. Like, mm-hmm. you don't really need to ever really remember where it's at. I probably would throw it away or bury it if I had that kind of property mm-hmm. to do that. Um, so, yeah. Just let it cool. go. Which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you feel cursed, I'd do that. If you feel hexed, I'd do that. Um, also, I love the idea of them being portals because, you know me, I'm fearful and also passionate about the paranormal it's (laughs) this like fun thing i get looking into it Mm -hmm. so i think that's a major thing um that i kept looking into and one thing i read that like let's say you have two mirrors in a house like in a hallway or whatever like just two walls facing each other you're amplifying this mirror Mm -hmm. and amplifying this portal like it's like yeah mirrors are portals but when Mm -hmm. you have two together Oh, yeah, it's a massive portal. And so, like, as soon as I read that, I literally walked out to the laundry room in my Uh house, and I was between two mirrors, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm in a portal! (laughs) And I was always afraid of the laundry room as a kid, because it's creepier downstairs. And And also, now I know there's a portal. Uh, that's kind of funny. Right. And I know you've had experience more than just seeing visions in your TV. You've had, like, a mirror person come out of a mirror kind of like a phantom yeah in my bedroom Mm -hmm. and they went like I said I have that mirror facing my window so they came out and then left through that window which is like good thing you had that fucking window Mm -hmm. there just be like okay bye hopefully you're not gonna go kill people (laughs) I don't think so they're just spirits (laughs) it's like you're that was the beginning scene of a horror movie (laughs) it was your mirror I guess. (laughs) That actually reminds me of something else I learned. Let's say you are doing mirror magic and you kind of want to shut it down and be Mm -hmm. like, okay, I actually have a vanity in my room and I want to shut that down and not have it be constantly like, you know, an accessible portal. Mm -hmm. I heard that you can turn it off by um, either drawing or just tracing with your finger like around the mirror. So like, let's say just like a square shaped mirror, you'd go around all four corners Mm -hmm. and then do an X to one corner an X over to the other corner. And then even for good measure, one person said, do like a circle in that X. Mm. Um, And that's just like, this portal is now closed for business. And then I wonder if you could just clean it to wipe it away if you did ever want to open the door again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely like almost like closing a circle Mm -hmm. of magic. Like we're just closing down the portal or after a session of a Ouija board, I'm closing this shit down. Mm -hmm. No more spirits are, are welcome to come through. That makes sense. Yeah. So that would be important if you're going to be doing mirror magic. Um, be open to experiences. Feel grounded. Feel protected. Maybe do cast circles mm-hmm. around yourself. Feel grounded in your witchcraft before you go too far. Right. I think manifestation and self-empowerment is the way to start. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yay. That's pretty much like some beginning stuff I learned, but I know that it can also amplify spells. So I think in the way that like the binding, you could do something for positivity, like I mentioned with the runes and just Mm -hmm. write something happy on there and maybe let that do its thing and just put those all over maybe Mm -hmm. your house or under your bed and any kind of protection vibes that you'd want to put on those two mirrors. I think that would be really cute as well. Very cool. Have you done mirror magic in the past? Um, There's nothing immediately that comes to mind because there's something really intimate about the mirror. And I don't know if I was really ready for that. I would spend time in the mirror and I'd mainly uh, make funny faces or Mm -hmm. like look into my eyes so deeply. It'd be like, whoa, is that a different person under there? Like it just looks so weird. But to actually open myself up to magic, I think I was too intimidated by. Mm -hmm. Um, But this past week, I actually spent time with my, like, cute little hand mirror and just staring into it and just saying loving things, positive things, you know, just having, like, conversations with myself. And I've been feeling, like, super amped on um, just kind of blossoming after everything I've been going through in life and feeling like I'm just moving on and, Mm -hmm. like, embracing all this happiness and it feels good and so I think that it could help anyone move on if they're feeling low Mm -hmm. it is scary to look into yourself and have self-love and I think that's really common and that's okay if you feel that way but you know embrace what's scary because that's where Mm -hmm. what lean into it that's what you need to work on right then who knows where you can go from there like you can learn a lot from yourself 
Mm -hmm. about who you are and what you stand for just by looking into your own eyes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What about you um, and mirrors and reflective surfaces and magic-wise? I mean, I've never really done magic per se, but I have done done it in the past, like, um, unintentionally, I suppose. And I know that um, I've always known mirrors were kind of this gateway. I think I learned that from... Probably a paranormal a podcast yeah. or something. I was like, I think it was from a movie because uh, I've known since I was little. Okay. And so... Um, and maybe Bloody Mary. Think of that tradition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I knew that in the old days they used to cover the mirrors for um, when somebody would pass away so that they couldn't stay in this world and they'd have to go to that one. So in that mindset, they were getting trapped in the mirror? No, I think that it was more like if they came to to see you in that mirror that they would take you with them. The fear was that you would then die too if you saw the spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew that as a tradition. I think there's some weird connection too with like vampires, like the dead not being able to have a reflection as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't quite remember all the stems of that. I wish I remembered that one because I do Mm -hmm. remember reading about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know when mirrors became a thing or when people started using Mm -hmm. them, but I would imagine that uh, they were pretty powerful right away. It's just what they provided for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that um, mostly I've always used the mirror to tell me the truth. So, like, it's kind of funny, like, um, we have several different mirrors in the house, and I know that if I've got an outfit on, I always want to go to this one specific mirror because I know it's going to tell me the truth and all the other ones are liars. (laughs) I like to have a full-body mirror after I get dressed. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to see how does this come across. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't know if that's for you what that mirror is or what your truth mirror is. I think so. It's not even my mirror. It's my daughter's mirror. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I remember looking at it one time. I was like, so that's what I look like. Okay. Throwing this shirt away now. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> like when I'm not feeling good about myself, I definitely avoid the mirror. And so yeah. I'm now it, I'm now playing back with that mirror. I'm feeling good. And I had a, a shirt I got rid of, too. I was like, oh, girl, this isn't doing you any favors. <laughs> shame, shame. <laughs> Why am I wearing this? But, yeah. uh, you know. What about beauty spells? What's your take on that? Because I know a lot of people use mirror magic to do beauty spells. I would say, like, do the beauty spells if you're the person who has a skincare routine or the mm-hmm. person who has um, makeup routine, like, as you're pampering yourself and giving yourself self-love, work in good affirmations and mm-hmm. and do things there, like while you're putting on your daily sunscreen and just to make yourself feel, you know, beautiful, amplified, appreciated, mm-hmm. and worthy. Like, this is your time to check in with yourself. And we don't always feel like that every single day. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think it's really great when we can be our own cheerleader. Right. Um, You know, life isn't always easy, but I have learned that it's mainly up to my own mind to decide how I'm going to be. So that reflection, if I'm going to be looking into that reflection and amplifying what I want, then that's, I'm going to like aspire to be happy, of course, and to love myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how a mirror can be really powerful. It's just going to help you reach your manifestations and Mm -hmm. get the life that you want. Right. It's funny because, you know, in children's psychology, they tell you that um, you should give your child a mirror when they're young so they can learn the value of how their beauty is. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool because I remember the first time I was able to see the mirror because I was finally tall enough. It was a long time. Like, I I was probably in the first or second grade. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, look, the mirror. Mm Mm-hmm. And they always talk about, as a woman, I don't know if anyone has ever told a man they should look at their dick. I feel like we're always telling men to put your dicks away and no dick pics. Yeah, but you need to look at your badge, too. Right. But every, yeah. but there's always that, like, that yeah. whole idea of, like, women getting together in circles and looking at mirrors and <laughs> yeah. having time with their vagina or whatever. I always, like, what movie is that? Fried Green Tomatoes. Yeah. Um, but, like, I really looked into that stuff and just how, like, that can be powerful because you're shamed as a woman on what your vagina looks like, mm-hmm. that it's gross, that it's this and that. And so even if you look at that and tell that you are beautiful, mm-hmm. you are natural, you are powerful. You're all, damn girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everything about you is great. Um, yeah. 
I mean, because guys do it all the time. You think so? They're just looking I at their heart it. dick. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> Calling you out, boys. So, yeah, girls, I think we do need to get more in touch with ourselves. Yeah. There's so much emphasis put on the femininity, femininity and, like, how we look and being mm-hmm. perfect and this and that. Like, you know, we need to love ourselves how, how we really are. Right. Don't let anybody take your light. You own that. Mm-hmm. You are you. I love you for you. Yeah. It's hard as heck, though. It is so hard. Right. I'm stomping my feet. I'm excited. We are. We're (laughs) passionate in the garage. I'm like, it is hard (laughs) to love yourself. It takes work. Right. It takes work. It is not easy. And you can have support from friends and loved ones and maybe Mm -hmm. a a partner, but really it's up to you to love yourself Mm -hmm. first. That ego. That ego gets in the way, I feel like. Like, for me, that's what my biggest issue is. I've struggled with body image issues my whole life Mm -hmm. and had eating disorder in high school. So, for me, I'm like, um, it's a struggle even today, even though I know all the things that I know and I do love myself. But it's so hard. Yeah, it's always a constant um, thing Mm -hmm. to love yourself. And, like, that's what I'm always preaching about magic. It's like, yeah, we can use it to feel good, but it's not... Oh, I did one spell one time and I'm good for life. <laughs> right, right. You have to keep working. Yeah. So, like, I think yeah. we could really learn to appreciate your mere time, appreciate your mm-hmm. your good night routine, whatever. I don't know why I call it good night routine, but you're going to bed routine. Like, maybe you spend time brushing your teeth in the mirror, mm-hmm. you're doing your hair in the mirror. Like, give yourself that love. Yeah. At the very least, I think that's the basics of mirror magic that I'm learning. And I would also think about where are your mirrors in your house? What are they reflecting? Right. It's kind of like feng shui. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that feng shui with your mirrors too. Mm -hmm. Going forward, uh, I will be really cautious of all my mirrors. (laughs) Uh, Just gonna be OCD at the end of the night. Like, okay, close this one down. Da 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 da. Put a blanket over this one. (laughs) Hilarious. Put this one in a drawer in a box. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe I need to do mirrors with my seance work. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I do seem to remember in old movies that a lot of times the hand mirrors, they never like to place them upright at that time. Oh. They'd always place them face down. Maybe yeah. they were trying to secretly tell us something. Right. That's true. <laughs> like, put that mirror down. I'm going to be asleep. Kind of reminds me, too, like, when I was growing up, um, I have one of those vanity mirrors. And I always used to keep... Um, oh, swivels? Um, no. Yeah. Well, there were swivels, but I always used to put... Um, fabric like sheer fabric around the mirror to kind of make it look extremely beautiful (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then at nighttime I'd pull it down a little bit nice yeah because he wants that reflection at night right and at nighttime the mirrors in my room do kind of creep me out like I'm just (laughs) waiting to see a shadow figure and I'm just like (laughs) she's like I can't go to sleep yeah the tv's reflecting weird stuff right (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I've I've always been afraid of the dark as a kid and mm-hmm. always had the TV on as kind of like my little buddy. Like, okay, you just keep making noises and I know everything's okay. Mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. I've went through periods of time. Love to like sleep that. to Cheers. That was a great show to go to sleep to. <laughs> like at night. Yeah, yeah the laughter. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. that like banter and familiarity and stuff. Right. Um, love that stuff. That's okay. great. Mm-hmm. For my mind to get better sleep, I've done more, like, music now as an mm-hmm. adult or just, like, Tibetan bowls. And right. Rain and Thunder are definitely the number one. And then I have this one I sleep to where uh, this female voice is, like, just telling me, like, really positive things while I sleep. Nice. And I swear by it. I will actually link it below because it's literally flipped my lid from depressed to happy nice. and then the next day I'm like I can go to work and I'm not going to care that it sucks Right. <laughs> I'm doing this because I need to yeah everything is grand <laughs> yeah. so like if you guys are looking for some sleep uh, meditation look below yeah very cool I thought you were going to say you recorded your own voice maybe that was just me I know that in high school sometimes I recorded my own voice with mantras and then listened to it back while I was sleeping <laughs> I think that'd be cool. Um, I mean, we do this for like an hour, but I've never tried to record anything solo for a freaking hour. Right. So one day, maybe I'll make that available. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That would be cool. I love it. Because we could cater it to be more magical. Mm -hmm. Like, your magic is super awesome today. (laughs) You're strong. You're vibrant. Yeah. Your vagina and vulva is perfect. (laughs) 
<laughs> Your dicks are too. <laughs> and anything in between. Yeah. Everything's great. Today is the best day. We're See, we're recording it right here. We're already ready, so we'll just do it together. We'll go back and forth for like an hour. Just, just <laughs> linking in. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Okay, yes. Yeah. We keep talking about all these meditation tracks. One day we'll get to all of them. Yeah. One day. For sure. So do you think you'll be using mirrors in the future? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've already used them as portal kind of energy. Mm-hmm. We have this one crazy one. Well, it's not mine. My, it's my daughter's. Um, she, she, I gave it to her for Christmas one year. And she, I got it from a garage sale. So, of course, there was that stigma for her that it was going to have all of this other person's energy on it and I okay. assured her that I did a ritual that it would not have make somebody else's energy yeah you're the master of cleansing yes I was like I cleansed it it's good to go she hung it up but we still um use that astrally to travel to maybe where somewhere else we might be I have that theory that I am in multiple universes, and I'm hearing a high-pitched noise as I'm saying it. Ooh. But I'm in multiple universes, and so I have to go to those different places. Do you feel like your other selves are helping you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I've traveled to many... I'm in touch with all of my other selves. So in our household, I know it sounds crazy, but there are scientific out there theories that support this. It just has to do with wormholes and... The multiverse. Multiverse, yeah. I feel like I keep seeing more and more articles talking about scientists, like, being like, of course there's a multiverse. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of what mirror magic made me think of. That, like, when you're looking in a mirror, I could connect to all the Sharons, the past life Sharons, the future life Sharons, Mm -hmm. any multiverse Sharons. Like, let's get this shit going. Right. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you can just astral into another life. <laughs> oh my god. Mm-hmm. That sounds so scary. Like just kind of like a Narnia thing. <laughs> yeah. Bye. See you in a bit. I'll see you in eight hours on this level. But... I feel like I've grinded hard enough on this level that like <laughs> it's gonna get better soon. Like I'm not leaving yet. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the world is burning, but it's fine. Yes, we've got this virus. I swear to you that this week has felt very apocalyptic, so I'm glad to hear about mirror magic because it can give empowerment. Yeah. So, which is exciting. a small little thing, even a compact mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to just have my own obsidian hand mirror, <laughs> but we'll see. We should learn how to make them. Yeah. Um, another way of scrying that I've done um, before I was comfortable doing mirror magic, I opted to do scrying in a water bowl. And that, when you do it at night, um, you have just this, like, a dark colored bowl, preferably black bowl, put it with water, Mm -hmm. have a candle so you have the, like, wavering light going on in the bowl, and zone out on that. And Mm -hmm. that kind of gave me the vibe of using, like, the black surface to scry. And I was, like, really, at that time, putting pressure on myself to see something. Mm -hmm. And so I think, ultimately, it was like, well, you didn't see anything, so it sucked. Like, you know, sometimes (laughs) you just have, like, super hardcore expectations. Right. I think I'm in a different level now, because that was years past. Mm -hmm. Um, So I should definitely try scrying again in the future, especially Mm -hmm. these next coming months when the energies are going and the veils are thinning. For sure. Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, witches are always, I mean, we're all at different levels. You and I are in different spaces. Like, and always we growing, can't compare, zigzagging. Yeah, we can't compare. We're just learning different lessons at different times. All of us witches. Yeah. That's one thing to remember. So it's just nice to be able to share it and the options are out there. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that idea because we're never trying to push one way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just so much to look at. And for me, the fact that I haven't done that much mirror magic kind of surprises me in a sense. Mm -hmm. But now I realize like I just had a lot, I was lying about myself um, and a lot of like self-confidence issues. Yeah. I can, I can relate to that. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. I feel like I've cleansed out a lot of my closet Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I'm feeling good. Nice. I know I was looking in the mirror this week a lot more just um, since I knew we were doing this episode. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been one of those people that have placed around my mirror happy things like things I want to tell myself every morning those affirmations and so like I've in the past looked in the mirror and said oh you're beautiful this is how your day is gonna go you know having those mantras to go by Mm -hmm. and having them written out was really helpful for me but now I don't have to do that and I can look at myself and I was kind of reflecting a couple nights ago just like 
oh, I remember how I used to feel when I'd look in the mirror and now I don't feel that way. And I'm like, I'm okay with myself having wrinkles. I'm okay with myself having one droopy eye, (laughs) you know, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Like I'm accepting of those flaws and I'm not that 90 pound person that I used to be, but I don't need to be. Right. Of course. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I had similar revelations and so nice when you're finally on the loving side and we're just trying to be like truthful and honest with you guys. We've been on the side where it's hard. Oh yeah. I remember getting out of the shower and literally turning off the lights because I didn't want to see what was going on in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to really address my weight and how I, how I reflected about my weight at that time. Um, not that weight is everything, but we all just feel different. And sometimes you feel heavier or you feel more clunky because you're mm-hmm. bumping into things like a stomach that you're not <laughs> used to and shit like that. Right. Um, but like, I just feel happy now and I can look in that mirror and I can deal with my reflection and the wrinkles. Like you're saying, mm-hmm. I was looking at my eyes and how they look just like there's more wrinkles than there used to be, uh, you know, I'm getting my thirties now. But I was also smiling and noticing how, like, that is a line from smiling. It's a line from being happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I love these wrinkles. I love my face. I love myself. Mm -hmm. So really embrace it all. Yeah. And that's the key. Like, you can't just try to, like, only love yourself after the makeup's on. But the makeup can be a part of it if you'd like it to be. Right. To, like, give you that boost and just creativity. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I definitely love makeup. I think makeup magic can be a whole thing, too. Where oh, like yeah. You're incorporating a lip color for this empowerment or this vibe mm-hmm. and to help you speak your truth. Like, you can put intentions into the process. Mm-hmm. Um, paint something on your face like a war paint if you're going into a crazy situation. Like, this makeup makes me strong. Mm-hmm. This makeup makes me see clearly this, this eyeliner and I'm going to see the truth. Like, you could really go all out. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like your imaginations, guys, is just going to take you to cool magical journeys that I didn't even mention here today. And Mm -hmm. if you guys are doing your magic, let us know. Yeah. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this episode. I think that we're going to do several empowerment kind of episodes in the future, hopefully. Yeah. I just really want to talk more about how magic can be really accessible to anyone. It doesn't have to be this, like complicated ceremonial thing that's scary Mm -hmm. um although we did talk about how mirror magic can be but there's ways for it to be so simple basic Mm -hmm. and powerful yeah you can do whatever your heart desires really yeah so we want to kind of focus on empowerment magic um for these tough times Mm -hmm. so if there's a type that you guys know about or are interested in have any ideas we are open to them as always yeah although our next episode has to be about Halloween stuff because we're going to be in October. That is so exciting. The yeah. season of the witch, baby. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So get ready for some spooky, uh, fun, Samhain vibed, like a month themed. Yes. Coming to you from the Cousins yes. Coven. It's our favorite time of the year. Yep. And then back to our normal stuff in November. But for now, let's take advantage of this month. Yes. All right, guys. So we'll be giving you next uh, Wednesday that Halloween vibes. And you can always find us at our blog, cousinscoven.home.blog, and anywhere else podcasts can be found. Um, Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, share with all of your witchy and weirdo friends. And you can send those emails to cousinscoven2 at gmail.com. And may you find happiness in your heart, love for yourself, and join each other. Blessings to all.